Power BI comes in several different versions. Power BI Desktop is a free application you download to your own computer. I recommend creating your dashboards in the desktop version as it maximizes development capabilities. Microsoft pushes out updates to the desktop version every month that include defect fixes, enhancements and new features. If you want to refresh your data, you will need to do it manually, as the desktop version doesn't support scheduled data refreshing. To securely share your desktop dashboards with many other users, you want to upload them to your organization's paid Power BI service, which can be an on-premises server or a cloud account. These platforms also allow us to schedule when we want to automatically refresh the data. Power BI, like many other technologies, is rapidly evolving, and future versions will undoubtedly include many improved capabilities and options to choose from. Microsoft also frequently updates these platforms, so your view may look different from what you see on my screen in this course. Power BI Report Server shares these dashboards by hosting them in an on-premises server. It allows access to a very large number of users without charging access on a per-user basis. This enables organizations to share their dashboards without drastically increasing their costs. Administrators of this server can set up a schedule to automatically refresh the data analyzed in the dashboards. It's important to note the Power BI Report Server isn't compatible with the latest version of Power BI Desktop. You will need to download the version of Power BI Desktop that specifically works with the current server version, which you can find on the Microsoft website. To create Power BI data flows, we're going to use the Power BI service. Power BI Pro is a Microsoft hosted cloud account that charges access on a per user basis as a subscription model. You can schedule to refresh your data several times a day. Similarly, Power BI Premium is an upgraded Microsoft hosted cloud account that provides the Pro benefits plus several other upgrades. Unlike Power BI Pro, it's not a per user subscription model. It gives an organization dedicated Power BI capacity. It also grants user access similar to the Power BI report server, which enables it to scale across many users. In the premium account, you can also schedule data refreshing more frequently than the pro accounts allow. The premium cloud account also gives you more options for creating data flows, such as building a new data flow from a data flow that already exists. When you share a Power BI desktop file through a cloud account, you can think of the file as a template containing two important components. The front end component is the visually dynamic front end dashboard. Behind these dashboards, you have the back-end component, or the data driving the front-end views, which reside in the dataset section of your workspace. Datasets can contain multiple data sources from a workbook connection that you set up an automatic refreshing schedule to update the data in the cloud. Other Power BI developers can subsequently connect to these datasets to develop their own dashboards in Power BI Desktop. If the dataset contains multiple data sources, they will connect to all these data tables. However, connecting to an existing dataset is a live connection type. This makes Power BI a front-end process only, which means you cannot change the dataset's established ETL framework, and you can only create visuals and limited calculations. On the screen, we see the ETL framework for the dataset. Let's say someone else in your organization wants to connect to similar data, except they want to add other fields to the ETL framework to better suit their own business needs. They would need to create a new ETL framework of their own, which replicates much of the work from the original dataset. 
Power BI Dataflows can consolidate much of the ETL processes into a shared data table that multiple users can then create their own ETL processes from. You can think of them as data structures within your organization to optimize the scalability and shareability to use your data. Those that connect to the data flow don't have to create their own entirely new ETL process or framework to get the data they need to create a Power BI dashboard. A data flow can reduce the potential for errors because it eliminates ETL variances between users by referencing much of the same ETL framework. It also increases data accessibility because it means someone unfamiliar with, say, SQL queries can still connect to this data. To understand the benefits of data flows, let's think of how data sharing works within an example organization. A large company has numerous departments, such as sales, finance, and operations. To get insight into the organization's performance in Power BI, they may each analyze sales data, but look at different segments of the data. They may each obtain their sales data through separate ETL processes, represented by the datasets you see. Let's say they also look at the global currency exchange rates, but some of them calculate daily rates to use, and others a monthly exchange rate. We also see these separate ETL processes represented as another group of datasets. What if they instead combined efficiencies by connecting to the same sales and exchange rate data, then scaled the data to meet their department needs? They consolidate the ETL process for the shared data into two data flows for the sales data, and another for the currency exchange rate data. This in turn significantly shortens the ETL process for their own datasets. This illustrates why Power BI Dataflows can play an important role in increasing an organization's data efficiency. You don't have to be a large organization to utilize cloud computing. For example, if you store and access your personal documents or photos online rather than using your own computer, you are using cloud technology. Cloud computing platforms tend to be less expensive and more secure, reliable, and flexible than on-premises servers. Cloud computing resources allow you to scale your computer and its storage resources up or down almost instantly by only paying for the services you need. This gives you convenience and cost control. These cloud platforms are also rapidly evolving and you are always learning something new to keep up. You can store cloud data in a data lake, which is a single location file repository that can store vast amounts of raw data from different data sources in structured and unstructured formats. Unlike a hierarchical database that stores data in files or folders, a data lake stores data in a flat hierarchy. They allow organizations to increase storage capacity for very large data sets, but also simplify data management and security. Microsoft has its own cloud computing platform called Azure. With Azure Data Lake, you can connect to other Azure applications for data ingestion and preparation as well as querying curated data. You can also tap into AI through machine learning models. Some of these applications require leveraging high levels of programming, data science, or data engineering knowledge. Power BI on the other hand, doesn't necessarily require much coding knowledge to leverage its powerful capabilities. You can actually leverage Azure Data Lake to store your Power BI data flows. This isn't a course on Azure architecture, so we're not going to get too much into that topic. Within the data lake, Azure stores data in folders in the structure of a common data model. Other Microsoft applications, including Power BI, can also store and ingest data in conformance with the common data model. It simplifies the process of sharing data by using a shared data language.
The common data model consists of a set of standardized, extendable data schemas that you can customize across applications, deployments, and models. These predefined schemas include entities, attributes, semantic metadata, and relationships. It uses open source standard definitions alongside customized schema to promote a shared understanding of data.